Okay, so I've been doing more short form videos on my TikTok. So if you guys want to check that out, it's at Gabs, G A B Z X Rags, R A G Z, on TikTok. Um, I've been doing more short form videos just about the devotionals and the things that I've been learning in my journey and everything. And I'm I'm starting this episode saying that because I know some of y'all are going to be like, Gabby, it's been a few weeks. Where's the podcast? Where's the podcast? And if you followed the podcast's Instagram, you know that I've, I've still been going. This is not like a, oh, I had a tough time. I was struggling. No, like I've still been going. I've still been pushing, but I've just been doing more like short form stuff um, and posting it on TikTok. One, because it's easier to um, it's been blowing up over there. People really love the short form stuff. So I've been doing that very consist- consistently, but I have missed the podcast. Like I, I have missed just sitting down. And since I went a while without it, like I kept just putting it off. But as soon as I sat down in this chair and I attached my mic and put on my headphones and stuff, y'all, I felt so at peace. So at home. So I'm back. I don't know how many times I have to do this, be like, I'm back. And I'm here to stay. But like, I never really left. I have been continuing um, basically what I do on here. I just do it in two to three minutes on the TikTok. So if you want to keep up with me, you can go there too. Um, It's just not mainly that. Like I'll post one of those videos probably every other day or every day. Um, But that's where a lot of like my fashion content and stuff is. So do with that as you will. Okay. But today we're going to be talking about um if you're audio you can't see all the gestures I'm making but I'm really doing a lot like why are my hands in the camera what's happening anyways um but those are only for the YouTube people who actually watch on YouTube so if you know you know also we've got a little upgrade on the podcast if you're on Spotify you can actually watch a video version too which is very cool. Um, don't know what I did to deserve it, but you know, it's it's an option now, it's there. And I choose that version every time. So if you're on Spotify listening, you can also watch if you'd like. It's up to you, it's totally up to you. But um, today we're gonna talk about our feelings and how our feelings are just not important on plan. We're gonna talk about our feelings as, and like how that, what that pertains to when being a Christian, because this generation is super big on this is how I feel my feelings matter this is how I feel so this is what's gonna happen we are huge on feelings and not to say that feelings are like a bad thing obviously God gave us feelings it's just everything is within moderation because a lot of people mm, our generation will be like I feel like uh, this therefore I'm not gonna do what I'm supposed to do I'm not gonna do this because I just feel this way I feel over I feel so much anxiety so I'm just not gonna do my responsibility I'm not gonna do what I said I was gonna do because I just feel like and not to mean it in a bad way because I feel like the way I'm toning it it does sound like it's in a bad way but it's like perfectly reasonable to you know act on your feelings our feelings is what makes us us you know but when you when you're walking a christian life this is something i had to learn that you can't follow your feelings when you're a christian you cannot always depend on how you feel and i'll give an example so this past week i was in i went to my very first influencer event biggest one of the highlights of my life something i'll never forget um and I had just talked about on my TikTok about how um, when you're becoming a Christian, God doesn't want you to turn to your old ways when something annoying or irritating happens to you. And I talked about how when before I really decided to get serious with God, I would if I was ever mad or if I was ever upset, I'd shut down immediately. I'm so good at it. I'm so good at just cutting everything off. Um, and I will either lose myself in social media, lose myself in movies, TV, or I'll go to sleep. If it's bad, I'm just going to sleep. Like I'm just like cutting out the world entirely, you know, and I'm really good at it. But now that I'm growing in God and I'm actually taking the time out to, you know, create a relationship with him and live this right, live this life the right way. He's told, he's revealed to me that I can't go to those old ways anymore. I can't turn to you know, just shutting down and shutting off completely. And if you ever watch Vampire Diaries, you would, it's like, 
I'm really good at like turning off my humanity. Like if something doesn't go my way, just like a quick like shutdown happens at me, right? And I've been really working on it because things are always happening nothing's ever going the way it's supposed to and i've really been working on trying not to just shut my like whole entire existence off in my mind because it's not going the way that i planned it to and so i was talking about how god doesn't want us to do that right next day it's time for me to go to my um an influencer event very first influencer event i've told everybody about it all my family knows i'm all dressed up i'm glammed up i look great um, and they send me an Uber code cause obviously they pay for everything. And I put the Uber code in and I'm like, okay, now let me get this Uber. I order Uber. They cancel. They can't come to my house. Um, I do, I live in LA. Everyone knows this, but I live in the Valley. So I'm very far out. It takes me like 35 on a good day, 35 minutes to get to LA, like downtown LA, but I live kind of far. So, um, no one really comes out here. It's not the city. You know, it's very hard. And I've had this issue before with another brand when I worked for a Hollister and they were sending me to New York. Um, I couldn't get an Uber. Like it was so hard for me to get an Uber to catch my flight. Luckily somebody came and it was like two in the morning or something, but I was freaking out. Right. Fast forward to that day, which was literally a few days ago. Um, I'm trying to get this Uber. I could, and I, I had an hour. So it takes me 50 minutes to get to the function, right? And I need to get this Uber now or else I'm going to be late. And I order one Uber, cancels. It says we can't come get you. I try to it again. They cancel again. I tried again. They cancel again. I tried about four or five times. This time, By this time, I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter if an Uber comes now or never. I'm going to be late. Now I'm going to be 30 minutes late. And I'm so upset. And I'm sitting on my bed and I'm like, I'm, I really want to shut down. I'm, re I'm so quick to, oh, what really kind of like pushed me over is, um, we only had my dad's car here. My dad's here, but he's in the shower. So my dad's in the shower. I can't even tell him. Cause I know my dad would be like, okay, let's get in the car. Let's go. He'll drive me. Right. But at the time, exactly when I needed him, he was in the shower. Right. And I'm like yelling at him in the shower. I'm like, I need, to, like, I need you. And he's like, Well, I'm in the shower. <laughs> and he like, he couldn't come out, obviously. Okay. And I remember I sat on my bed and I said, Are you for real? Like talking to God. I'm like, Are you serious? I can't have this one thing. I understand that you take, and I'm, and I'm literally just letting him have it. You know, I'm like, um. I'm like, I understand you take us through situations, but geez, like you can't just let me have this one thing, can you? And I'm like, it hurts to even like think about now because I can't believe I said most of these things, but I was just angry. I was like, are you for real? Like, this is the one time, like you've given me this opportunity and now you're going to have me be late. Like all I needed was one Uber. One person couldn't pick up the thing. Like, and I was just going off. And then right after I said what I wanted to say, um, just venting. I I felt myself about to just shut down, like go into I don't care mode. Like who cares if it actually happens? I don't even care, you know? Um, and right when I was about to, I accidentally, I'm on my phone, right? And I accidentally pressed the video of me talking about me not doing this anymore. <laughs> me not actually giving in to this way of living anymore. And I go, are you for real? Like, and I'm watching it. I'm about to scroll back out because I, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear anything. I, I'm the type of person where like, if I'm in my mood, don't try come and fix me. Like, le let me please go away. So I was about to exit out of the video and I'm like, are you for real? And it's just playing in my mind. I'm like, I, and I, and I talked to, to my dad about it. I was like, this is kind of crazy that, you know, this is. I just talked about it. I just preached this in quotations because I'm not a preacher, but I just preached this to a what 10,000 people. And now I'm facing it the very next day. And now I have to live it. And it's just crazy that that's what happened. But um, I didn't go by what I felt. I was about to shut down. That was the whole point of that story. We're 10 minutes in and I'm not even on my notes. Come on now. But the whole point of that story was that I felt like shutting down. I wanted to shut down. Every bone in my body told me to shut down and just not care. Like I was about to just not go. 
Like that's how angry I was. I was about to just cut it off completely, cut the feelings off, cut everything off and just sulk, right? But nothing comes easy to us, especially Christians, because we're destined to be great. So nothing comes good to those. I mean, nothing comes easy to those who are great. And we get have these moments so we can have these stories to tell other people, share with other people so other people can relate and know that, no, it's not just you. It's not just you going through this. But I didn't go by what I felt. And um, I wanted to go more into depth about not uh, recognizing when it's you feeling something and not going by what you feel. So I got the story from a devotional. I'm doing this uh, plan on the Bible app and it's like talking about your mindset or whatever. And on day four, it was talking about confess what you believe and not what you feel. And it had this crazy quote in it that I just talked about on TikTok, but I want to bring to you guys. It said, don't use your mouth as a thermometer, which only reads the temperature of your current condition, but use your mouth as a thermostat, which changes the temperature of the condition of your life. And I thought that was, I've never heard that before. And I'm so surprised I've never heard it before because it's, it, it kind of gives iconic, you know what I'm saying? But it's basically saying a lot of the times we use our mouth just to, just to state the plain and obvious, right? Like, okay, you're up, you're in a bad situation. Dang, this sucks. Dang, this is so annoying. Why does this always happen to me, me and my situation? Why can I ever get anything good? Why can I ever get anything easy? Why does there always have to be an issue? And those words have power. Your mouth has power. The things you speak have power. And instead of using that power to state the obvious and just, um, instead of using that power to dictate what the temperature in the room is we could use that power that that's very same power to change the temperature in the room if that makes sense and i thought that was such an interesting way to state it because that's like that's visual and it clicks in my mind and this is something i just want to tell everybody like don't let your situation um dictate itself like you would always switch it up and your words could do the same and there was a few scriptures that they talked about in this first joshua 1 and 1 and 8 this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth which is what the lord told joshua um there's another one joel 3 and 10 let the weak say i'm strong um which means don't speak what you feel all the time otherwise your mind can't change learn to speak god's word instead and um jesus did that in the wilderness if anybody knows the wilderness story, um, Jesus, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. It's in Matthew 4, I believe. Yes, it's in Matthew 4, verses 1 through 17. Um, Jesus, he was in the wilderness. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. I think sometimes when we think about Jesus, or at least when I think about Jesus, I know him as like this big, grand, like, god basically and so when we're talking about him being on this planet we're still thinking of him as this like huge just omnipresent god right but when he was on this earth he still felt everything that we felt he un he he was tempted with the same things that we were tempted with and in this story it really brings that to pass because satan tried to tempt him three times right and it's not that jesus didn't feel that temptation he satan knew what he was doing like for the first temptation it was physical right um jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and was hungry like clearly starving like i can barely do tuesdays and fridays from 7 a.m to 12 p.m of fast so for him to do 40 days and 40 nights fasting you know he's hungry right and satan goes if you're the son of god turn those stones nearby into bread he knew that would tempt him. Satan isn't stupid, okay? He knew that that would, you know, really tempt him because obviously he would want bread because he's hungry. And Jesus said, no one can live on only food. People need the word that God has spoken. People get feed on the word that God has spoken. And he quoted scripture back to him, which is amazing. So Jesus felt hungry. Jesus felt tempted. But instead of using his words to showcase his feelings, he uses God's words. He uses scripture to change the condition 
of the situation, which I think is just a perfect example to the quote that we just talked about. And then on the second t- temptation, uh, Satan took Jesus into the holy city and he put him on the highest part of this temple. And I talked about this in the TikTok. How did they get there? I have no idea. Like, I would love to see, like, it showcased in a show or a movie. Did they float to the top of the um, temple? Did he walk him there? Did they drive? I would love to know, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but Satan, he used scripture, okay? He said, if you are God's son, jump off. And then he quotes a scripture. He says, God will give his angels orders about you. They will catch you in their arms and you won't hurt your feet on the stones. Scripture, that's Bible, right? Which I also want to stop there and say, I think we underestimate Satan way too much. I think sometimes, including myself, I'm like, you stump on Satan's head. Satan ain't got nothing on me. And then he'll cause me to turn, like, turn back to my old ways. He's slick and he knows what he's doing. Um, and he, the fact that he chose to use scripture on Jesus, like that, that shows the gall that he has and the, and the, uh, links that he would travel to, to knock you off your path. Okay. And so he said all of that. And then Jesus used the scripture back against him. Hey now. And he said, um, the scripture also says, don't try don't try to test the lord your god boom right that's temptation two and then temptation three Satan took jesus on a very high mountain once again how did we get there um and it was a mountain where jesus could see the whole kingdom right and Satan said i will give all of this to you if you will bow down and worship me and jesus said go away satan the scripture says worship the lord your god and serve only him and then the devil left Jesus and the angels came to help Jesus because he was stranded on top of a high mountain. Actually, that's it doesn't say that, but that's what I'm assuming, right? But it's crazy that Jesus went through all of that temptation, right? And it couldn't have been easy on him. Clearly, Satan said these things because, you know, in some way, shape, or form, it could trigger Jesus, which means he knows him he understands what he's going through what he strives for and he's trying to like tug on those strings and get him off course but the consistent thing that jesus did jesus never said what he felt we never know what he felt we we don't even know because he just used scripture text-based evidence and what i also thought about is if he was able to off the dome think about scripture um in this situation can you imagine what his study life must be like his like bible his devotionals and how often he does it and how much he studies the word in order for him to have three separate occasions where he uses a different scripture to fight off satan and it really makes me want to like level up as well because i mean i'll be honest I do once a day in the morning when I get up before I touch anything else, I do my devotional and I pray and I worship. I do it once a day, but it makes me wonder, like, should I, I know I could do more and should I start doing more? Because, um, it's very vital that you know your word and it's very vital that you, you, you're able to recall things when it's time. But back to the main point, which is, uh faith over feeling basically um we can't revert to what we feel we can't revert back to um the way we used to do things and the way we used to attack things i know some people are very avoidant so if issues arise they choose to avoid the issue but what if god wants you to face the issue head on are you going to listen to yourself or are you going to listen to him and it's just a matter of you know, knowing your place, which is very important, which is something that wasn't very hard for me to pick up because I've always been a very, um, not proud of it, but I've always been a very like rule follower. Like I never really had a voice for myself. I just did what I was told, did what I was supposed to do. I followed everybody else. Right. So it kind of shows in my Christian life where it's not very hard for me to be like, Lord, I'll take a step back. 
you can do it. You got to take a step back. You know, it's not hard, but I know for other people, it can be hard. There are people out there who are very strong willed, not saying I'm not, but who are very like, um, just choose to only listen to themselves, I guess. And that could be harder for you to realize that God's first in your life. Yes, it's your body, but he's the creator of your body. You put him and then it's you. Okay. And um, at first it sounds daunting, but if you realize that when he's in front of you, he's protecting what's behind, which is you, um, you, it's more comforting in a sense. It's more comforting when you realize that, um, God loves you and he only wants the best for you. It's easier to let him take the rain. And yeah, things might be seen, my themes might seem just so bad right now. And, you know, thing after the next one thing after the next, is just, you know, bad thing after bad thing, but we can't turn on God. We really can't turn on God. And I'm kind of getting off my notes, but in my situation that I gave in the beginning, I was turning on God. I was like, can can you be so for real right now? Like, do you have to do this right now? You can't give me a little break. Meanwhile, he's up there working for my good. Like, chill off the brother. Chill off the brother, okay? Like, you don't, like, and... I really had to just apologize um, to him in prayer. Just give my, just, I'm sorry for allowing my emotions and my feelings to make me turn on the one thing that has never turned on me. On the one person that has never taken their anger out on me. You know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. I'm, um, I wouldn't say I'm glad I experienced it because I'm not happy I did it, but I'm glad I've learned from it because hopefully this experience and this um, evaluating it helps me to never do it again, you know? Um, But I let my feelings get a hold over my faith and I think we do it all the time. And sometimes you don't even notice that you're doing it where you just like take over um because you feel like you don't have enough time so you take over and you do it yourself and then you're wondering how did that end up there and it's because you took over it and you didn't allow your faith to take over you so god can handle it i hope that makes sense because i'm just talking out of my head right now like i i don't even hear what i'm saying but (laughs) the last scripture i want to give you guys is uh proverbs 18 21 this is very important. This is one that my mom quotes all the time. Um, without actually quoting it, we'll say something and she's like, your words have power. Your words have power. And it's just, we're annoyed. But it's very important. Proverbs 18.21. Write this down. Remember it. Um, get it tattooed on you if you have to. I don't know what your thing is. But um, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Ding, ding, ding very 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 important um because death and life are in the power of the tongue it is it's shown many times throughout the bible that um it there's one story about a man one of his servants were sick or his son was sick or something um and i can't remember exactly what happened but he heard god was in town and just his faith of going to god and saying god if you say he's healed then he will be healed. And God said, it's already done. Just his faith of going to, uh, going to Jesus and saying, um, you can heal him. You will heal heal him if you wanted to healed who he wanted to get healed. Like death and life are truly in the power of the tongue. It's many examples. I mean, there's many times in the Bible, Jesus just said, rise or boom, you can see again now. And just, that alone has brought healing and just miracles to people's lives. He gave us the power of the tongue and he gave it to us. And a lot of us are using it for evil, gossiping, evil, um, just calling people names. I've learned that I need to stop calling people names. Yeah, like, yeah, it's funny in the moment, but that has an effect on people, you know? And even ones that you don't think, could hurt do and i'm not saying be a boring person there are other ways to have fun there are other ways to throw jokes and things like that without condemning a person and without putting a person down um and what you might think i know this is big in um 
I want to say black households, but I don't know if it's like a race thing. But I know in my family, like we grew up hearing names, y'all, like not just immediate family, but like extended family. Like we call each other stuff. OK, just because we heard like our parents, aunts, uncles saying all this stuff. Right. And the older you get, you're like, yo, why were we calling each other that? Like, that's actually insane. Like, that's borderline bullet. Like, why? Why? Um, but it's just normal in our world and i think we really need to take a step back and really fully examine what we're saying to each other and what we're what seeds we're planting in each other because ultimately it will come out eventually and then it'll be a huge issue so it's better to look at it now take a step back and just really make sure that we're using the power of the tongue that he gave us to our best abilities and to his best ability as well not just to ours but to his um but yeah I've gone on a very long time, um, but I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, and once again, if you want to see it more consistently, then you can go to my TikTok. It's just a very quick summed up version of these videos. But love you guys. God loves you. I hope you guys have a great morning, noon, or night. And I will see y'all in the next episode. Bye-bye.